Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 2010 Future Shop community webcast. Really excited to be here again at our Young Dundas store in Toronto. Very excited to launch something at Future Shop nationally, and that's 3D television. That's what we're here to talk about today. Great pleasure to introduce our panel that are joining us uh, this afternoon, this morning if you're on the Pacific time, for those of you that are, that are tuned in online. To my immediate left, this is Eric Stockner. He's the director of home theater at Future Shop. He's basically the guy the, who has the fun job of ordering the fun products for our home theater department, and he helped bring 3D technologies to Canada. So big ups to Eric. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. To Eric's left, we've got Robert Gumiella. He's the director of marketing at Samsung. He's basically the marketing guru who brought Samsung 3D TVs and this entire campaign to Canada. So welcome to Robert. A familiar face, a familiar voice is Jamie Campbell, who's sitting next to Robert. Jamie's actually a familiar voice from the Olympics that just passed, as well as the Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll get to uh, cheer on Jamie beyond today as the Jays kick off their season to Canada's uh, favorite baseball team. Welcome, Jamie. <laughs> to, left, to Jamie's left is Roger Christian. He's uh, very well known in the movie industry. He's actually an Academy Award winning winning director and art director. He's probably both best well known for his awards that he won uh, on Star Wars. And that was back in 19, 1977 when that movie launched. So welcome to Roger. And, Rod, and beside Roger is Richard Bicknell. He's a VP of marketing for Universal Studios Home Entertainment. And Richard is a marketing visionary behind a massive company that brings us a lot of movie favorites, such as The Bourne Identity, The Bourne Supremacy, that whole Bourne series. So welcome to Richard. <laughs> Let's begin with, 3D, uh, with our three discussion with a question to Eric Stockner. And Eric, this question came in from one of our customers. They want to know about glasses. So glasses, the question is, do we have to ha wear them when experiencing 3D in Canada today? Why, and do you think our Canadian customers are ready for this? Sure, yeah, so glasses, absolutely, you do have to, you have to wear them. Uh, the reason if you're looking at a 3D TV without glasses, it looks a little bit blurry, is you're seeing two totally discrete and different images happening at the same time. And what the glasses do is they break it down so that each eye is only seeing one of those images, uh, and that gives the 3D effect. So glasses are absolutely necessary. Are Canadians ready? How many Canadians went to see Avatar and wore glasses, right? How many? <laughs> so all, Canadians have seen, have used glasses for almost 50 years. If you think about the old, the old-fashioned 3D movies, I remember so the cereal ready. boxes, and you can get those cutouts. Yeah, absolutely, ones that you bet. they're ready. Awesome. Yeah. Really excited that they're here at Future Shop too. Robert, this question is for you. All right. And this customer wants to know what kind of DVD player do you need, or I guess source do you need to watch 3D on the 3D televisions here? Um, there's. A lot of misconception about what the source for 3D has to be. The best source is going to be the 3D Blu-ray player, because that's where you're going to get the native 3D content that was mastered by the director, by the studio in 3D. But with Samsung televisions, we are unique in that we have 2D to 3D up conversion. So when you get home, it's just not a matter of taking the movie, the Blu-ray player, and watching that 3D only. We can watch Jamie in 3D, the next time he does a sportscast. We can watch the Blue Jays, we can watch the Leafs. Any regular content can be up-converted to 3D. And what is Samsung launching this time around in terms of uh, a source? What can, what's available to our customers? The, we are launching with Future Shop here today uh, a special package where you buy the television, you get the Blu-ray player, two pairs of glasses, and the movie Monsters vs. Aliens for a package price. One of my favorite animation films. Thanks, Robert. You're welcome. And next up to bat is Mr. Jamie Campbell from Sportsnet. And this question, Jamie, is related to sports, surprisingly. There are many sports where viewership has been the, on the decline for some time. Think about maybe boxing, tennis, etc. In your opinion, can the 3D revolution revive and possibly save some of these sports? Well, I'll relate a quick story about going to see the movie Jaws 3D in 1982. And I don't know if anybody else here saw it, but it was... I was too young at the time. I don't think my parents would take me there. It was a terrible movie. And I'd actually taken a grade 10 date to that film. And she decided afterwards she was never going to go out with me again. And for the longest time, I blamed the film. Because it was a terrible, terrible film. And then I realized later, it wasn't the film, it was me. 
And I relate it to a modern story of there's a single woman out there who gets asked to a terrible movie by George Clooney and then George Clooney says, would you like to go out again? You probably would say yes, even though the movie sucked. What I'm trying to explain here is that is that if, if a sport is on the decline and you noted that perhaps boxing and tennis, though I may not necessarily agree with tennis being on the decline from a viewer standpoint, um, can be enhanced by 3D, my answer would probably be not necessarily. Uh, I think what 3D will eventually do is it will it will introduce the world to sports that we're now just being introduced to that may be more uh, applicable to three-dimensional television, like the extreme sports. ESPN, not surprisingly, is launching a 3D network, and they have the extreme games, winter and summer. So imagine seeing um, uh, snowboard cross or ski cross or skateboarding in 3D. Uh, I think some sports will actually be elevated in their profile by the advent of this technology. Roger, this question goes out to you. What is the difference in technology between shooting film in 3D and up converting to existing 3D films already? That's a different animal. It's um, when you shoot 3D, you're already planning what you're going to film from beginning to end. So you are, and there's two different sides to that question. If you're doing horror films, you want stuff flying out at you and scaring people. And if you're looking at normal dramas, then the actual effect of the 3D dimension into the TV screen enhances it no end. So now that Avatar has done its job properly, um, launched a, a, a worldwide recognition of how good 3D can be, they're upgrading, and that was what everybody, Lucas is waiting for, everybody was waiting to see if this could be marketable, and now it is. They're all going to be upgrading their movies. All the big ones will be coming now, and they're, they're almost there with the techniques to upgrade it. So it's certainly easier with science fiction films where you're using CGI, because that's all computer generated, so they can go into the computers and redo all of that. Where you have live action film, you have to um, have new techniques to, to create that. But they're getting there. Things are moving very fast. And last but not least, Richard, this question goes out to you at Universal. What movies can consumers expect to see in 3D in the near future, aside from the ones that we've already talked about today? Wow. Uh, it, it's, uh, there's going to be a ton coming out. I mean, I, I think there was about 20 3D movies in theaters last year. And there's going to be at least 20 more uh, in, in 2010. So we've got uh, a Clash of the Titans uh, coming out soon. We've got Toy Story 3. There's uh, Shrek 4. Uh, cats vs. Dogs. I, I say to Roger, I think I even heard there's a, there's a jackass coming out in, uh, in 3D. Uh, and of course, a little later on in the year, there's, there's Tron Legacy. And then, and then a little further out in the future, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard uh, all kinds of rumors. So uh, Steven Spielberg's uh, Tintin, um, uh, uh, Cars 2. Uh, I've even heard about uh, perhaps a, a Beetlejuice. Um, so it's Roger's point about that, but directors actually remastering the film. So there's uh, there's so much coming out, and, and the rumors are flying fast and furious on, on the internet. Uh, uh, Buck Rogers, I heard this morning, is going to be shooting in, in 3D. I've heard Terminator 2, I've heard Titanic re-released in 3D. So it just uh, it just seems like there's so much excitement about this, and there's going to be a lot of content coming out. Yeah, and I think that's great with all the kind of current movies that are in the theaters now and then paired with all of our classics. So the old school meets new school. It's kind of a nice twist. Indeed. Great.